Hi guys, it's Minx here. Hope you're doing well. I wanted to do like more talky and ranty videos recently, so I thought this was as good a place as any to start with me doing a talky and ranty video. And today we're going to be talking about the press conferences that have happened so far at E3. So in this video we're going to cover the EA conference, the Bethesda conference, and the Xbox conference. So um, hopefully you guys will enjoy, and I'll give my opinion on some of the shit that went down. I'm not going to cover every fucking topic, but you know, we'll, uh, we'll see what happens, guys, and hope you guys enjoy the video. Let's get into it, shall we? So I'm going to start with the EA press conference. I don't have a whole lot to say about this, if I'm honest with you, purely because I'm not that interested in the games that they covered at the EA conference. I feel that sports games really aren't my thing. I'm not a big fan of, like, war games, and I'm not a big fan of um, racing games and that kind of thing either. So there wasn't a huge amount of stuff to see here, but we'll, we'll have a quick look at what's what was covered. We'll have a quick look. Obviously, you had the fucking EA Sports shit, more Madden, more FIFA, stuff that I have absolutely no interest in. I'm sure some of you play those games, but for me, they just don't really... They just don't really speak to me, you know what I mean? I just don't really enjoy sports games. I don't want my games to be based too much in reality, and I find these games tend to be... Um, Battlefield 1 community stuff was mentioned as well, um, the, in the name of the Tsar DLC, I think was the, uh, name of the DLC here, a woman's battalion of death, so, you know, I mean, like, I'm not really one to, like, harp on about representation in video games, I don't usually think it's that important, if I'm perfectly honest with you guys, but, you know, it's always nice to have the chance to play as a girl in a game, I suppose, as a girl, so, you know, I quite like that, I quite like it, but yeah, um, I'm not a big fan of Battlefield stuff, so there you go, um, that was the t main announcements on that first bit of the conference. We do have Need for Speed Payback. I used to play Need for Speed, um, the old game, like Need for Speed 3, I think it was. Hot Pursuit? Need for Speed Hot Pursuit? I don't know. A really, really old one. I remember playing it a lot and enjoying being chased by the police and stuff and having a lot of fun with it. I haven't really got into them in, like, the immediate sort of recent times, but, you know, they're okay. They're kind of fun. I like the idea of the police chasing you sort of thing as a as a mechanic of the game. I, I do enjoy a good old high-speed police chase. I do enjoy big crashes and stuff. So I suppose I don't hate racing games. I just usually feel that if they're too serious, they're not for me. But Need for Speed isn't too serious. So yeah, Need for Speed Payback. Give it a little bit of a thumbs up. I'll probably give it a try. So there you go. They also covered A Way Out, um, which is from the creators of Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons, which... I kind of liked, I thought it was a little bit fiddly, but I kind of liked, um, so there's another co-op game in a similar vein, it involves two men breaking up a prison, um, so there you go, it's not, it's not particularly revolutionary I feel here, but it looked alright, I like the idea of more co-op games, there needs to be more co-op games out there, so there we go, that was a way out. and, um, I guess, I guess I'll give it a spin, it's certainly something I'm gonna try, I suppose, um, EA also gave a teaser for um, Anthem, which will be revealed more at the Microsoft conference. We'll cover in more detail on that bit of the video, but, you know, um, Anthem looked good. We'll talk about it more in a second. Um, NBA Live 18 was covered. I don't, I don't know anything about basketball. I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't care, okay? Um, Star Wars 2 Battlefront happened. Um, you know, I actually... I actually don't like Star Wars very much. I kind of like some of the older games. I played Old Republic a fair bit when it came out, but then I got bored of it quickly. I'm not a huge Star Wars fan. I have no interest in the most recent films and that kind of thing. I, I guess I enjoyed the old films as a kid, but it's not something I'm really interested in. Um, this is obviously quite a big release, though. They, they put a lot of time into this in the conference. I just... Just not something that grabs me, but I can understand a lot of people do like Star Wars and are be excited about taking part in, like, um... You know, like, proper 2020... 20 vs. 20 multiplayer gameplay, it seems to be, including special characters like Darth Maul, Boba Fett, you know, characters like that. So, you know, I think it, I think if you're a fan, it certainly looked interesting, but for me, not something I'm particularly interested in. I found the whole EA conference in general was pretty dull. Just not my cup of tea, if that makes sense. And I hope you guys understand that I'm not slagging off EA here. I just don't feel that they were my sort of games. EA do make games that I like, but for the most part here, the games that were covered... Pretty spectacularly dull, if I'm honest with you, in terms of grabbing my attention. So, yeah, let's move on to some more stuff, shall we? What's next? So, now we're going to move on to the Xbox One X, which is the name of the new console, by the way, they're releasing in November of this year for $499. Probably about, I don't guess, like, I'm going to guess, like, easily £500 here in the UK, maybe even slightly more. But, yeah, um, Xbox One X, and um, it looked pretty impressive. I feel that the PlayStation uh, Plus is pretty 
pretty shitty, and I feel there are quite a lot of problems with Sony's console at the moment. I haven't been entirely happy with the PS4, and I feel hopefully Microsoft can give it a bit of competition. Hopefully both of them can improve. Hopefully, hopefully this is good. I'm looking forward to giving the Xbox One X a try. I will uh, probably pick one up, assuming um, that these exclusives uh, are something I definitely want to try. So yeah, uh, the main the main gist of the uh, the conference here was Microsoft showing games that are exclusive to either Xbox One X alone or Xbox One X and Windows 10. So you know if you've got PC, you can play them on PC as well, a lot of these instances. Not all, but a lot of them. And they had a ton of games here. This was a really good conference in terms of just showcasing the amount of cool stuff that was on offer. So I mentioned Anthem before. Bioware's new intellectual property is Anthem. It's a multiplayer, third-person, first-person RPG shooter type thing. It looked like a cross between... Um, Destiny and Horizon Zero Dawn is probably the best way I can describe it from what we've seen so far. It looked pretty fun. It had that awful, I, I, God, I hate that fucking garbage sort of like a fake microphone voiceover that they do in trailers. It had that, had some cringe in this fucking tra gameplay trailer. But the game itself looked promising. A little surprised to see Bioware not doing a pure RPG. I kind of feel that RPGs are not represented well enough in the market as it is, and seeing the golden RPG maker sort of like moving further and further away from it under EA's sort of like uh, control, it, it does make me a little bit sad to see a company that I liked a lot making games that perhaps I'm not going to enjoy that much. But hopefully this will be fun. I'm, I'm going to give it the benefit of a doubt. I'm definitely going to try Anthem out. So I wouldn't say I was like absolutely like shitting myself at excitement, but I still enjoyed... You know, I, I enjoyed the general premise of this. It looked all right. Assassin's Creed Origins was announced. Um, Ubisoft has unveiled the first latest installment in the Assassin's Creed series. That's reported from GameSpot there. Um, it said in Egypt, it looked a lot like the original Assassin's Creed, if I'm perfectly honest with you. It's um, a bit of a shame to see that the game hasn't really changed a lot. I, I, it's been a while since Syndicate and I thought maybe they're going to reboot this. Maybe they're going to come up with something, you know, revolutionary, but no, not really. It's just the same game again. A few added mechanics. They had like a mechanic of the, the hawk flying above, which reminded me of um, Far Cry Primal's mechanic, actually. They're made by the same people, so that would make sense. I don't know. I thought it was... I thought it was okay. I'm not super excited, but I do like Assassin's Creed, so I will probably play it. Just a shame there wasn't perhaps a bit more uniqueness to this title. Going back to Ancient Egypt, though, will be cool. I don't think enough games utilize, like, historical settings, and Assassin's Creed is obviously a franchise that always does. So, you know, um, definitely going to give it a try. Um, Black Desert Online uh, was announced for Xbox. I mean, it's, it's all right. I played it a bit on PC. It's okay. It's not that exciting. There you go. That's, that's my thoughts. It's really pretty, but it looked less pretty on Xbox than it did on PC, I must admit. Crackdown 3 was announced. Um, I'm going to level with you guys. I've no idea who Terry Crews is. Uh, a lot of people were freaking out on Twitter at the time that, holy shit, Terry Crews is in this trailer. I have no idea who that is. I, I have absolutely no idea. Um, let's, let's just Google right now, shall we? Let's, let's see who Terry Crews is, because, you know. Um, I feel that Crackdown never really stood out to me. Is an American actor, artist, and former American football player. That's why I have no idea who he is um, at all. So there we go. Uh, yeah, I feel that Crackdown has always been a bit lacking as a franchise compared to um, other games that allow you to have like superhuman powers. I feel that Saints Row three and four. I feel that um, I feel that uh, what was it called? What the fuck is it called? Infamous, Infamous, and um, Prototype all do that type of gameplay better and in a more fun way. And I think Crackdown just just kind of like is a bit dull, if I'm honest with you. I've never really seen the appeal, and those games I feel did a much better job of being fun compared to Crackdown One and Two. So yeah, I, I don't have much much interest in Crackdown. I'm perfectly honest with you. Dragon Ball Fighter Z, another Dragon Ball game, great. Forza Night Sport Seven, don't care. Serious racing game. They showcase this a lot, by the way. There was like a, I think it was a tie into a new car and some shit. Jesus, like they showcase this a lot. They were like, this is how. 4K is going to be, and it's really cool, we're going to get like amazing graphics and things that run natively in 4K, that's a really cool thing, don't get me wrong, but I have no interest in motorsports and that kind of thing, so you know, um, we'll move on. There was a bunch of indie games that um, I'm going to touch on very quickly, uh, we had Cuphead, which is like a old school Disney style platformer I suppose, it reminds me of the art style of Bendy and the Ink Machine, looked really good, really excited about that, looked really interesting. Um, 
There was an Ori and the Blind Forest sequel. I never really played Ori and the Blind Forest. For a minute, I thought this was Fable, and I was, like, shooting myself in excitement, but it's not. It's called um, The Will of the Wisps. I think, I believe, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, I guess. I, I mean, I'm not that excited, but, you know. Um, we have a Super Lucky Tail, which I thought was an Oculus Rift thing, but it's not. It's a side-scrolling game coming to Xbox One and PC later this year. It's based on an Oculus game, I believe, though, from what I can tell. Uh, Tacoma, which is by the guys that had Gone Home. I really like Gone Home, although this trailer for Tacoma gave absolutely fuck all away. I mean, it may as well just out of the fucking screen with the word Tacoma written on it, because this was literally, like, fuck all. Like, this was fuck all. I didn't have a huge amount of uh, excitement for this, but when I found out it was by the Gone Home guys, I'll give it a shot for sure, just because it's made by them. You know, I feel that's a fair shot there. Um, what else was there? I'm trying to think. Um, the Last Night... Um, looked really interesting. It's like a pixel graphics sort of like cyberpunk murder mystery perhaps type thing. Really looked interesting. Really want to try that one out. It looks really interesting. I really like the aesthetic behind it. There was a few other games as well. There's one called The Artful Escape, which had you like doing guitar moves to make platformers move. It seems like it's like a a platformer where you rock a guitar to progress is the best I can say to describe it. There was a few other things that didn't really catch my interest. Um, but moving on, a more important announcement was Life is Strange Before the Storm, which may be a timed exclusive for Microsoft. I'm not 100% sure here. But um, yeah, this is a, um, a prequel to Life is Strange. I don't think this is Life is Strange 2, guys. I think this is um, a three-chapter, from what I can tell, expansion to tell the story of Chloe before the events of Life is Strange. And I'm really excited for that. I think Life is Strange is one of the best games ever made. Really excited for more. That's Life is Strange before the storm, and I am really can't wait to see how that pans out. We had Metro Exodus, a new Metro game. I really like Metro uh, 1, Metro 2033, and Metro Last Light. Metro Exodus, really excited for it. It looked gorgeous. More of the same, perhaps, but we certainly saw it. We saw a new enemy, a new monster, this like gigantic, like like infected bear thing, it seemed to be. Really awesome. Beautiful trailer. Can't wait. Can't wait to try this out. I love the Metro games, and I can't wait to play it. Really, really super excited. Um, what else was there? There was a few other things, like Minecraft's getting updates in 4K. I mean, who, 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 does anyone give a fuck about Minecraft anymore? Presumably they do, because lots of YouTubers play it still. You know, I, I, it was this fucking trailer looked like a fucking YouTube channel trailer. I have no interest in Minecraft anymore. It's a dead game to me. I had fun when it first came out, but fuck me. It's, it's really old. And 4K Minecraft, really? Like, they were super hyping this up, too, because obviously Microsoft owns Mojang, so I'm assuming Microsoft's going to get quite a lot of exclusives here. Microsoft is investing a lot of money into making Minecraft, like, a serious thing for the Xbox. And I understand why it's a big cash cow for them, but for me, no interest really here. Player Unknown Battlegrounds getting an exclusive console port. That's all right. I mean, I like Player Unknown Battlegrounds. I'll probably do some videos of it soon, actually. I'm going to stop streaming it more. But, um... You know, it's not super exciting news, is it? It's a game we've been playing on PC for a while now. Sea of Thieves. Now, this was a really fucking major thing. This They dedicated a lot of time to this. They had, like, a fourth wall-breaking trailer. So this is, like, an open-world, maybe MMOE, but maybe just multiplayer-y slash action game. So you're pirates. You and your friends run a crew. You get treasure. You fight undead pirates. You fight other player pirates. There's sharks. There's swimming. There's deep sea diving. There's island exploration. This looks absolutely amazing. This was so exciting and I really can't wait to see more of Sea of Thieves. I was really getting like goosebumps throughout this entire thing. I was like, holy shit, this looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, it's coming to Xbox and PC, so I'll probably play it on PC, but still, it was really awesome to see it here and um, really exciting. This is being made by Rare, I think. Um, so pretty, pretty good stuff all around. I, I was really, really looking forward to this, and it really delivered, I felt, on making an exciting game. I can't wait to see more. State of Decay 2 was announced as well, uh, wrapping it up here. Not that interested. I thought State of Decay was okay. It had an interesting premise, but I disliked the mechanic where that if you didn't log into the game, everyone fucking died. I don't want to be pressured into playing a game. You know, I don't want time to pass when I'm not playing a game. I want it to pass when I'm playing it, and that's it. So I, I didn't really like that mechanic, and it made me feel stressed out when I played it, so I, I stopped playing. But yeah, State of Decay 2, pretty soon. There you go. I felt Microsoft did a pretty good job here with the conference. Just games, 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 games. Really exciting. Uh, there's a few like little extra titles I missed there, but generally, you know, that's that. So we're moving on to uh, Bethesda now, and let's see what Bethesda did. All right, guys, uh, moving on with the Bethesda conference. I thought this was pretty terrible, if I'm honest with you. I thought there was nothing really here that was that exciting. 
just a bunch of bollocks, if I'm honest with you. Of stuff that I feel we didn't need and stuff I didn't want. And yeah. So um, they were focusing a lot on like content creation for Skyrim and Fallout 4, like mods and that kind of thing. There was a bit of discussion about that. I'm, I'm not really interested in those. Again, I know a lot of you are, but I just feel those games have kind of run their course now. Especially Skyrim. Like, it's been re released so many fucking times, it's ridiculous. Um, they released a VR port of Doom, a preview for it. Not released the game, they did a preview for it. This looks uncomfortable garbage. I, I'm still not sold that VR is like a good thing. I've done a fair bit of VR testing now. I have a Vibe, I have a PS Now. Uh, not PS VR, sorry, not PS Now. But neither of them have really grabbed me or made me want to do content based around them. I just feel they're. I just feel awkward and clunky and I just don't really get the draw. I don't really understand the excitement behind it. I feel that um, most VR games I play feel pretty gimmicky and terrible, and I just I just don't enjoy it, really. Um, I, I don't really understand how this is going to come forward into the mainstream, really. I don't, I don't think it will grab people's attention more than a gimmick still. I might be proved wrong, I might be proved wrong, but I, I feel that controller or mouse and keyboard is still the way forward to enjoy a game, if I'm perfectly honest with you. These games just feel like slapdash gimmicks, and um, I don't think they can ever really rise beyond that at the moment. Uh, Dishonored 2 DLC was announced, Death of the Outsider. I quite enjoyed Dishonored 2, it was alright. Um, I felt I felt it was a bit too much like the first game, but it wasn't awful, I, I didn't hate it, and um, it was nice to play um, the chick, can't remember her name, Emily maybe, whatever. Dishonored 2 DLC, Death of the Outsider, you know, it's, it's what it is, it's more DLC. There you go. Um... Megan Foster is the main character in this, and uh, looks like it could be pretty interesting. I like the Dishonored lore, and um, this isn't, like, completely unwelcome. It's just, like, you know, this is fairly obvious this was coming. We're going to get some Dishonored 2 DLC, you know what I mean? Elder Scrolls Legends, a free-to-play card game, trying to cash in on the, I guess, the Hearthstone and Gwent-type markets. I'm actually kind of getting into uh, getting into card games a bit more lately. I quite like, kind of like, Gwent has really grown on me. I hated Gwent to begin with, but I played uh, more of The Witcher 3 recently, and I really got addicted to playing Gwent, and i am be playing the Gwent card game more. I, re I really I really actually quite like these. Um, so maybe, maybe this will be fun. I'll probably give it a shot, The Elder Scrolls Legends. Elder Scrolls Online has passed a new milestone. 10 million players. I'm not sure how many of those active players. Like, I fail to believe that's actually players. Um, and, um, I mean, I, I played the fair amount of The Elder Scrolls Online. I, I, I reckon I played at least 50 hours of it. It was all right, but it just felt like a half assed Elder Scrolls game is the way I would say it. Like, it just doesn't have the deep connection you have with games like Skyrim and Oblivion. And it... It just doesn't really work. I mean, it's not awful, don't get me wrong. They've obviously added the uh, the Morrowind expansion to it recently. I just wish they'd make a new Elder Scrolls game. Or remaster Morrowind. A remastered Morrowind? That would be fucking amazing. I know there's mods and shit, but I want a remastered Morrowind. Like, there's so much more they could do to, like, further the Elder Scrolls franchise than work on this MMO. The MMO, for me, is not a great thing. And I've, I'm not that interested in it anymore. Like, I, I haven't purchased the Morrowind DLC for it. I, I probably won't. I just don't think it's worth the investment or time. It's just... I don't know. Um, if you want an MMO, I think WoW and, and Final Fantasy XIV is still where it's at. Um, Final Fantasy XIV, by the way, expansion out this week. Going to be playing it a lot, so um, please get ready to watch that. Um, the Elder Scrolls V uh, is coming to... Uh, sorry, The Elder Scrolls V. Skyrim is coming to Switch. Who gives a fuck? Like, who gives a fuck, really? We knew that was coming already. Who gives a fuck? The Evil Within 2 got a trailer. Um, controversial opinion, but The Evil Within was shit. Like, it was really shit. It was clunky. It was messy. It was frustrating. It was difficult to play. It made me nauseous. Like, I remember playing with Chrism last year, and the two of us were just, like, wanting to vomit. I was so angry. It, it was just a mess of a game. Absolutely garbage. Fundamentally broken at points as well, and still wasn't patched when we were playing it considerably after release. Like, it was just a waste of time. I, I hated it. I absolutely hated it. And The Evil Within 2, it's just, again, it shouldn't have had a sequel. It shouldn't, I guess it's sold enough to have a sequel, and that's why we're having a sequel. But it shouldn't have had a sequel. It's it's a bad game. It's a bad game, The Evil Within 2. So, uh, uh, The Evil Within 1, sorry, I can't say for 2, obviously, yet. Yeah. But I, I feel this is a, a game that a lot of people didn't want. I, I tweeted like I didn't like The Evil Within 2 today, Evil Within today, and a bunch of you replied to me like, Evil Within was shit, Evil Within was shit. I thought I had a controversial opinion in saying Evil Within was shit, but apparently a lot of you seem to think it's also shit, so there you go. Um, yeah. Fallout 4's getting VR, who gives a fuck? Then we move on to Quake Champions. Quake Champions is pretty exciting for me. I really like uh, Quake 3 a long time ago, obviously. 
and I'm looking forward to uh, streaming Quake Champions and stuff like that. Uh, I, I think it's this is. I mean, I don't think this is a, a good game for YouTube, but for streaming, sure. And it looks a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, so fast-paced arena combat. I like me some fast-paced arena combat. There you go. A uh, new Wolfenstein was teased as well. I don't really like Wolfenstein very much anyway. It's like a franchise I'm not interested in as well. I'm sorry, guys, but this was a bit negative, the Bethesda conference. But I feel they didn't really announce much. And they didn't announce things that I wanted to see. I really wanted more Elder Scrolls. Like a proper fucking new Elder Scrolls game. Even just a teaser. Even just like fucking a panning shot of like, a, I don't know, fucking Cliff with some music playing. That would have been enough to make me like shit myself in excitement. But unfortunately, it wasn't there. There wasn't really anything to grab my attention here, so, you know. Um, sorry. Uh, anyway, that's the roundup of the first three conferences. I'll do another one of these when there's more to cover. I, I like doing them in chunks and that sort of thing. I, I might stream some of them, but I don't really know yet. We'll, we'll just wait and see what happens. But regardless, that's the first three conferences. I hope you enjoyed this little summary. Um, if you did, leave a like. If you'd like to see more videos with me talking about video game bullshit, please let me know. And um, that's it, pretty much. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Have a great day. Bye for now. Bye for now.